welcome back to the third and final installment of the series that is encouraging us to reclaim the passion. And we've been seeing how vision leaks and we get distracted and that distraction turns to confusion and frustration and a growing sense of drift. And we've seen how God is calling us to reclaim the passion for community in the last installment to reclaim our sense of purpose but the question is to what end where are we headed the truth is we we need to reclaim our sense of journey towards the promised land where are we headed and what does it take to get there and we were seeing last time how important it is to keep our sense of purpose right in front of us, to to prune whatever needs pruning so that we're able to stay sharp in terms of that purpose. In this instalment, I want us to look at two things. What is our promised land and how do we get there? Now, like we were reminding ourselves last time, the mission of Kingfisher Family is to reach lost people and see them transformed into fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That's been our guiding light, if you like, for the past 30 years, through good times and bad, to become that community that lost people are attracted to, that family family where people can experience healing community, the reality of transformation, the the, if you like, the statue in the middle of the, the lump of rock being more and more revealed. To be the prophetic people who introduce lost people to Jesus Christ and to express that newfound faith through baptism and beginning to grow in the life of a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. That is our purpose. That is a feature of the promised land for us. But then... What came increasingly into focus uh, for us here in the UK was the sense that we were being challenged to be more and more at the centre of society, not on the fringes. We were being challenged to bring about change in society by being right there at the centre, showing and living a better way, seeing the structures of society changing as they're being exposed to the values of the kingdom. This is, of course, a two-way struggle because although we are being challenged to be in the centre of society, bringing kingdom values into that society, so that society is bringing its values to bear on Kingfisher. We've clearly made significant gains in terms of being a kingdom presence at the centre of society. For example, our social enterprise called Treasure Seekers has been recognised nationally as being a safe place for abused young people, those who are addicted to drugs, for those who are on the outskirts of society. And it's great to be positioned in the world, but we need to reclaim the promised land. Now, it's not easy being distinctively God's people in the world in the world, but not of it. Jesus recognised that, which is why he warned his disciples about this very subject. He said one day, Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer and to show them that they must never give up. Why did he have to deal with this issue? Because it was, and indeed is, a real issue for anyone who's called to be a pioneer. Uh, A missionary society is reported to have written the following to David Livingston, uh, the great great missionary pioneer. Have you found a good road to where you are? If so, we want to send other men to join you. And Livingstone replied, if you have men who will come only if they know there's a good road, I don't want them. I want men who will come if there is no road at all. The difference between a pioneer and a settler is that a settler will stop when the the road ends, but a pioneer won't give up until the mission is fulfilled. 
a pioneer has staying power because a pioneer has a point to their life. Their life has a purpose. And if you know your life has a purpose and you believe in that purpose, you're able to put up with and overcome an incredible number of obstacles. You know, we've got an incredible mission to reach lost people and see them transformed into fully devoted followers of Christ, not stopping until there are no more lost people. Now, that's big. That's the promised land we're heading towards. What does it take to claim and reclaim that ground? If you ask that question of anyone who is a proven pioneer, they'll tell you the same things. You do it through developing persistence when the results aren't coming, patience when people let you down, and passion when unexpected setbacks occur. These are the three attributes that Paul had in abundance. Persistence, patience and passion. Uh, and that's why he was such a great pioneer. And they're precisely the attributes that he wants to pass on to his young protege, Timothy, in, in, um, uh, in, in his writings to Timothy. Let's have a look at them in this, um, in, in this episode because they're precisely the attributes that uh, we have to have in church if we're to see the amazing plans of God come to pass. And the, the same is true in our personal lives. So firstly, Paul tells Timothy, you've got to have persistence when the results aren't coming. Paul says to Timothy, preach the word of God, be persistent, whether the time is favourable or not. Now, I find that very encouraging. Even the pastor of the world's most influential church of its time, Ephesus, who had the Apostle Paul to back him up, experienced times that were unfavourable. What did Paul tell him to do in those times? Be persistent. Why? Because that was the mission that God had called Timothy to, and it was Timothy's job to be obedient to that calling and God's job to produce the fruit. You know, I, I well remember the days when here in uh, Kingfisher in the UK, um, at church, we would see maybe just nine people coming to our evening service. And it took a lot of motivation to spend uh, hours and hours producing a sermon that only nine people were going to listen to. I also remember the realisation one time that we were being uh, faithful to God, but by not passing round the collection plate during the service, which is what uh, we believe he called us to do uh, right from the, from the start, not passing the collection plate round. But that as a result, we weren't, unfortunately, even seeing enough money to uh, coming in to, to pay the rent, let alone pay even a little bit of a, a salary. It's at those times that there's a great temptation to compromise or just give up. After all, what's the point? You try and do the right thing and it doesn't work. Now, my guess is that you'll have got to that point by now. What's the point in persisting when the results just aren't happening? Let me tell you why God allows that. He who is able to do abundantly more than all we ever ask or imagine. It's because... It's a defining moment for whether we're going to grow into pioneers or not. You either give in or you persist in doing what you know God has called you to do. It's easy to say now that God's hand was obviously on Kingfisher right from the start. And so, of course, it would survive and persevere and grow into what it is today. But frankly, that's not how it felt at the time. There have been times in those days of just nine people at a service 
and no money to even pay the rent. Uh, that, that, that we've been one service away from closing down. I look at those times now and I believe God's saying, you have no idea how crucial those moments were to your development. I took no delight in them, I believe he's saying, but they were crucial. And not only do we come out of those times stronger, but we come out with his abundant blessing to those who by persistence in doing good seek God's glory, honour and immortality, he will give eternal life, the Bible says. In other words, if you don't give up, don't compromise and don't opt for the easy life, you will have more than you could ask or imagine. Now, honestly, as I look at the Bible and as I look at, as I look at history, what I see is that the greater the calling, the greater the testing. The greater the period of preparation, which, of course, is not just one period, but multiple periods as God takes us on, on to the next step. Now, I say this not lightly or flippantly, but my decision is this. And so since God in his mercy has given us this wonderful ministry, we never give up. Now, God's given me this wonderful ministry and I'm not giving up. Do I expect periods in the future when results aren't coming? Yes. Are they going to be pleasant? No. Are they going to make me decide to give up? Well, by the grace of God, no. Neither will Kingfisher Church. We're a pioneering people, and pioneering people understand the need to have perseverance, whether the results are happening or not. Well, the promised land also requires us to develop patience when people let us down. The issue for pioneers is that they see things that settlers don't see. And so they are constantly finding that the people they thought were their travelling companions are disappearing. Pioneers see the finishing line and so they're able to endure the hardships and the setbacks and the disappointments along the way. Whereas settlers see where they've arrived at and don't really want to see beyond that. So they become resistors in the light of the, of the pioneers saying, come on, let's move on. The promised land is still up ahead. Pioneers can either get angry or they can get d dismissive, you know, I don't need you anyway, or they can do what Paul encouraged Timothy to do when he encountered resistance from the settlers around him. He said to Timothy, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. You know, it's very easy for people who are trying to get out of the boat and do something new and scary for God to become frustrated and even resentful of those who don't want to get out of the boat but are content to, uh, to criticise people who are laying their, their lives on the line from a safe distance. It's very easy for a pioneer to turn into a cynical and even bitter person. How crucial is it for pioneers to really take Proverbs 25 verse 15 into their hearts and live by it? Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. Patience is one part of the fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5. Patience comes out of humility, which recognises that all have sinned, all have fallen short of God's glorious ideal. Patience grows out of a growing closeness to Jesus Christ and increasingly taking on his characteristics and becoming more Christ-like. When he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they, they don't know what they're doing. 
Jesus was the ultimate pioneer. And from his vantage point of, of hanging on the cross, he could see that nobody else, uh, nobody else understood. Nobody else understood why he was there and what his mission was. And yet he demonstrated patience with them. And that's the benchmark for all pioneers. They, they'll see what's ahead whilst others don't. And so they'll be resisted and they'll find that people who are their travelling companions no longer want to travel with them. We found this at, uh, at Kingfisher Church over the years. We've had literally hundreds of people who have decided that the direction of this church is not for them. Some have tried to change that direction. Others have accused us of going in the wrong direction and they've left. And the vast majority of those who have left have done so believing that they're right and that somehow Kingfisher is wrong and that hurts. And I'm not saying that we're always right about everything and that every step that we've taken is completely in the right direction. But what we have to do if we want to continue towards the promised land is to bless, to love, to forgive all those who speak ill of us. One of the inevitable things about being a pioneer is that the arrows you are going to get are going to be in your back because you're leading the way at the front and it's never pleasant being shot in the back. When do pioneers stop being pioneers? When they stop being willing to pay the price and not dealing with the hurt of feeling let down and misunderstood is the quickest, surest way of getting to the place of no longer being willing to pay the price. Honestly, we need to search our hearts regularly on this. We need to check out whether we are holding people who have hurt us or parted company with us in unforgiveness. And if we are, we need to consciously release forgiveness to them and patiently carry on. The alternative is that we will not have the resources we need to complete the mission. So Paul tells Timothy that to go on heading to the promised land, he needs persistence, he needs patience. And thirdly, and this is true for all of us, he needs passion when unexpected setbacks occur. Passion is what gets us through those times of setback. And those times are unavoidable. Just when you think you're on a roll, uh, you're going well, things around you are going amazingly well for you, something happens that really knocks you back, really uh, unsettles you. Maybe your area of ministry is growing wonderfully with your team seemingly on fire. And then in the space of a couple of weeks, three key people say that they don't want to do it anymore. Or maybe you've been praying about getting a new job and the perfect job comes up and somebody else gets it. Life is full of setbacks. That's just life. Timothy was no stranger to the setbacks, which is why Paul says to him, but you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at bringing others to Christ. Complete the ministry that God has given you. How do you get through the times of suffering? by knowing what God has called you to do, what he's given you a passion for, and deciding that you're going to complete that, not just in the easy times, but in the hard times. Just, just keep a clear mind about this. Setbacks come and setbacks go, but I am going to finish the race. I am going to keep the faith. Now, that's not to minimise the difficulty of coping with setbacks. It's just to say that they're not going to dictate the end result. 
Paul is so right when he says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Guarding your spiritual fervor is so crucial because it's easy to serve the Lord and lose your passion. How do you keep your passion, especially when unexpected setbacks occur? Well, the answer is summed up in one word. And I don't claim to have mastered this word, though I know it's uh, to be the, the key to maintaining passion. The word is balance. Unexpected setbacks are inevitable. But when we hit them and our well is already dry, we are already uh, empty inside, that is when they're dangerous. You know, when Paul says, since God has so generously let us in on what he's doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. The key word there is occasional, occasional hard times. We have to balance the hard times with the refilling times. And in order to do that, we have to recognise that those refilling times are, we have to recognise what they are. What is it that refills you spiritually? Finding your places of refilling keeps your passion up when you encounter unforeseen setbacks. And in addition to that, what keeps your passion burning when setbacks occur is knowing the point of it all, knowing where you're headed and what awaits you when you get there. Brothers, says Paul, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. That's the goal. That's where we're headed. And with that glorious prize in mind, we're not going to throw up our hands and walk off the job. How could we? You know, it's my firm belief that God is encouraging us to, to, to reclaim the passion of uh, moving towards the promised land. We've all around the world been through incredibly hard times these last few years. But here's the message. Don't give up. Don't give up. Listen to the perspective of someone who didn't give up. His name was Martin Luther King. And here are the last lines of the last sermon that he preached on the night before he was killed. He said this, well, I don't know what will happen to me now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And likewise, I say to you that we as God's people will get to the promised land. Father, that is our faith-filled confession. We will get to the promised land. But for those of us who are feeling that they are dry inside, the well is, is empty inside. For those of us who are feeling that we have nothing left to give and we've encountered setbacks 
and disappointments and people have let us down and we wonder what's the point in continuing Lord, I want to pray right now in Jesus' name that you would refill the well, that you would fill each of us once more with passion that we may see clearly once more the promised land and that we would be able to say, like Martin Luther King Jr., with a sense of commitment, with a sense of positive confession, we will get there. We will get there. The promised land is up ahead and we will get there. So Lord, encourage those of us who are flagging. Heal those of us who are hurting Fill those of us who are empty. Refill us, Lord, with passion, I pray. And set our hearts and our minds and our vision towards the promised land. And I ask it for all of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wow, I hope this series on reclaiming your passion has been a blessing to you and I, I just pray if, if 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 you have lost your passion if you have just been beaten down or discouraged just just re-listen to this uh, this series again and allow the Lord to to refill you with a passion for him and I hope you can join us again next time as we start a whole new series of talks in this podcast. And uh, in the meantime, you can visit our website, kingfisherfamily.org, to find all of our resources uh, there online available to you. Until then, God bless you. See you soon.